Relevant links are in the description of this video. Rick Rosner and I were friends in high school in Boulder, Colorado, in the late 1970s. His test scores place him among the smartest people on earth, and he attributes his high scores to habits he's followed for decades. With diligent practice, says Rick, anyone can pop their IQ up by at least 25 points, at least in terms of test scores. A 25-point boost can make a huge difference in your kid's education. Cash-strapped public school systems place the highest scoring kids in special programs that offer excellent education programs with the best teachers. For instance, Rick says, North Hollywood High has a highly gifted magnet program and you need a 150 IQ to get in there. A 150 score is higher than 99.9% .9 of test takers. With two kids of my own, I thought I should ask Rick for some IQ boosting tips. Here's what he told me, first and most importantly, take practice tests. It's the number one way to improve scores. IQ tests are meant to be given cold, so the primary way to do better on them is be familiar with the kinds of questions asked and how they are presented. Find out what kind of test your kid will be given in school and go online and download as many practice tests as you can. When your kid is taking the official test, says Rick, it will be harder to trip them out. The same principles can be used to improve SAT scores, which universities place great importance on when considering college applications. The SAT functions more or less like an IQ test. He warns that SAT prep classes are of limited value. Yeah, you can take the prep class, and your score might go up 20 points on a scale that runs up to 1,600, so it's negligible. The way to outperform on the SAT is to practice like crazy. Take at least 30 practice tests. Ideally more than that. Use official ones, because the ones from other companies are no good. Rick gave his daughter lots of practice SAT tests while she was still in middle school. She won a prestigious national scholarship awarded to just 30 students a year, providing winners with a full ride to the private high school of their choice. Practice makes perfect, but is it fair, and might it distort her knowledge and view about intelligence? A new study has found that East Asian American students, those whose families come from China, Japan, or Korea, are significantly more likely than other Asian Americans and members of all other racial or ethnic groups to take SAT preparation courses and to benefit from such extra coaching. Much research has found at least modest gains associated with using test prep, and that fact has raised questions about fairness, since most test prep services charge fees. The new study focuses on racial and ethnic groups, rather than the student population as a whole, given concerns of many over racial gaps in the average scores. The study finds that the greatest gains for East Asian American students came in the first and second generations, with the gaps decreasing with subsequent generations in the United States. Further, the paper suggests that one reason for the relatively greater success of East Asian Americans could be the development of cram schools in ethnic neighborhoods that compete with the better-known test prep companies. Cram culture has caused a serious public health crisis in Northeast Asian countries. East Asia has been gripped by an unprecedented rise in myopia, also known as short-sightedness. Sixty years ago, 10 to 20 percent of the Chinese population was short-sighted. Today, up to 90% of teenagers and young adults are. In Seoul, a whopping 96.5% of 19-year-old men are short-sighted. Jews also have high rates of myopia. A study of the influence of study habits on myopia in Jewish teenagers found a statistically significant higher prevalence and degree of myopia in a group of 193 Orthodox Jewish male students who differed from the rest in their study habits environmental factors, particularly educational behavior, are more strongly linked to short-sightedness than is cognitive performance. To put it crudely, myopia is not the ophthalmic sign of intelligence, rather it marks the striver, says Eloriza Mershahi.